All right, the power of a grateful heart. Dr. Richard Swenson shares this story in his book, A Minute of Margin. Or margins. He called it Flowers from the Grave. He shares the story. He says Elaine was 63 years old and, and already had advanced cancer when I first met her. After surgery, there was a little, there was little that I could, could be done. She healed nicely from the operation, but then developed a persistent cough. It is probably the tumor, Elaine, I said. We should get an x-ray or an x-ray, a chest x-ray. No, doctor, she replied. I don't want to know. Soon, however, her shortness of breath left us no choice but to investigate. Elaine, I said, your x-ray shows fluid. <clears throat> we can make you more comfortable by draining some of the fluid off. It doesn't hurt much and you should be able to breathe easier. Under normal circumstances, tapping the lung is followed by an x-ray to make sure the lung has not been punctured. But after three uneventful taps in the clinic, I decided to deviate from protocol and do the procedure in Elaine's home. By, by now, she was having difficulty getting around, he said. He said, each time I entered the room, I would sit on the bed and we would talk. Then I will examine her lungs, prepare her for the procedure, and introduce the needle into her chest. On the third visit, I held her hand and together we looked out the open window. Each sense the end was near. Those are beautiful lilacs, I said, noticing for the first time the flowers hardly a foot outside her open window. The room was full of their fragrance. Lilacs are my favorite, she replied. That is why I wanted to be down here, close to them. After draining another quart of fluid off her lung, I left the house for the last time. A week later, she died. After her death, Elaine's daughter brought a huge bouquet of purple lilacs to the clinic. She asked the receptionist to bring the flowers to my office, explaining that it would be too hard for her to see me just then. This was the note. Words seem inadequate to express our thanks for all you have done for our family. Because of your kind, caring ways, Mom was able to stay in her home and be as comfortable as possible. Mom wanted the best doctor in the world to enjoy her special lilacs. God bless you. I received many expressions of thanks from the relatives of deceased patients, but this was the first time I had been given flowers from the other side of the grave. I certainly am not the best doctor in the world, but for a moment I felt like it. Medicine can be grinding a grinding profession when money is the only reward. But this is the quote in which caught my attention and why I wanted to share. He says, but when love is the currency of exchange, gratitude alone can pay the debt in full. I want to read that again. When love is the currency of exchange, gratitude alone can pay the debt in full. My brothers and sisters, we can't pay God for what he does for us. And all he does for us is out of love. Love is his currency to us. And he asks us to love him in return. However, when we, even when we don't love him, he still asks us to acknowledge and be grateful for the blessings and love. Gratitude is easy for some, difficult for others. One day, a young man by the name of Anthony was going through his late grandmother's belongings 
found something curious, a small, worn-out journal. On every page, his grandmother had written something she was thankful for. As he read, it didn't matter if her day had been good or bad. She always found something, something to thank God for. He noticed phrases in there, thank you, Lord, for the sunrise. Thank you for the laughter of children and grandchildren. Thank you for the strength to carry on. Curious, Anthony decided to try it. Each night, he wrote down three things he was grateful for. At first, it felt awkward. He could only think of basic things. I'm grateful for food today. I'm grateful I woke up. But something began to change. Slowly, his heart softened. His outlook shifted. His circumstances didn't change overnight, but his heart did. I want y'all to get that. His circumstances didn't change overnight, but his heart did. Gratitude became his anchor, pulling him out of the storm. Anthony's story isn't unique. It's the story of many who've discovered the transformative power of gratitude. And today, as we explore the power of a grateful heart, I believe God wants to anchor us in the same gratitude, especially in these challenging times. Our text of scripture today that was read, Psalm 100, verses 4 and 5, most of you may be familiar with it. If you're not, I want you to open up your, eye, your electronic device, open up your Bible. I want you to highlight this one, underline it, put it, mark it somewhere. It's Psalm 100, 100, verses 4 and 5. The Word of God says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with what? Praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is what? And his love endures what? His faithfulness continues through what? All generations. This psalm is called, is a call to worship. But it's more than that, my brothers and sisters. It's an invitation to a lifestyle. Are y'all there with me? Gratitude, thanksgiving, and praise are the keys to unlocking God's presence. The psalmist says, if you want to experience the fullness of God, come to him with thanksgiving. But here's the thing. Thanksgiving isn't always easy. It's simple, but it's not always easy. When life feels heavy, when the bills are unpaid, and some of you are here today worshiping with unpaid bills, if you want to be honest, I know some of you have blocked some of the calls and ignoring some of the calls. Y'all, you, you, you understand. So when the bills are unpaid, when the health report isn't what you hope for, gratitude can feel like the last thing on your mind. And yet gratitude is what draws us closer to God. In that classic book, Step to Christ, the author, Ellen White, one of my favorite Christian authors, says, when we praise God for what we have, our hearts are warmed with the consciousness of his spirit. Listen to this, my brothers and sisters. I want you to get this. For those who like writing things down, I see the ones who take notes. Get this one. Gratitude is more than polite manners. Manners. It's spiritual oxygen. It keeps your soul alive. It is spiritual oxygen. It keeps your soul alive. It keeps our souls alive. Imagine, go with me, get your mind. Imagine a deep sea diver plunging into the ocean. They can explore the beauty beneath the surface, but only as long as they stay connected to their oxygen supply. Without it, their struggle to survive let alone enjoy the journey. Gratitude is like that oxygen for our souls. It sustains us spiritually, allowing us to thrive and see the beauty in life. 
even in its depths. Without gratitude, our souls suffocate under the weight of negativity and despair. But with it, we breathe in life, hope, and the presence of God, no matter how deep the waters. Are y'all there with me, my brothers and sisters? If you don't enjoy it, I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to be reminded that I need to praise God and be grateful every day. Now, looking at our text, let's break it down a little bit. The Bible says, it says, enter his gates with thanksgiving because I'm trying to give you spiritual oxygen because some of you guys are suffocating today. You're just grasping for air because you've been weighed down with negativity, seeing all the dark places of life and everything in your life seems and appears to be dark. So I'm trying to breathe into you some spiritual life. Are you there with me? So the text says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Imagine walking up to a king's palace. The gates are massive. The courts are filled with splendor. The only way to enter is with gratitude. Thanksgiving is the spiritual key to enter God's presence. In that same book, Steps to Christ, that's the book I gave all the, the baptismal kind of days today. It's called Happiness Digest, just a different name, but the same book has this quote in it. When we praise God for what we have, I said we draw closer to him, my brothers and sisters. When we praise God for what we have, we draw closer to him. There's nothing tricky about that, my brothers and sisters. Here's the truth. Thanksgiving isn't for God's benefit. It's for ours. Gratitude shifts our focus from what's wrong in our lives to what's right about God. Now listen, it says now enter his courts with thanksgiving and praise. Now we're going to go to the second part. It says now it's going to give you three characteristics of God. It says number one, for the Lord is good. That's what David said. It says for the Lord is good. Are y'all there with me? Mm. Notice, this doesn't say the Lord is good when life is good. It simply says the Lord is good. Follow me, my brothers and sisters. His goodness doesn't depend on our circumstances. It anchored, is anchored in his character. His character never changes. The same God who delivered Daniel from the lion's den, the same God who walked with Shadrach, Meshach, and a, that bad Negro in the fire, the God, that God is still good today, my brothers and sisters. God's goodness doesn't, listen to me, y'all got to stay with me now, because this right here is this very complex situation oftentimes, because when we say God is good, God is good all the time, God is good. We say it, don't we? But he, he, y'all got to stay with me. Then. Stay with me. God's goodness doesn't mean you'll never face headaches. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean you won't encounter pain. But it does mean you'll never face it alone. That's the difference, my brothers and sisters. It doesn't mean life won't have its challenges. But the goodness of God is who he is. He promises, I sympathize with you. I have compassion for you. And I will be with you come what may. His goodness walks beside you, carries you when you can't stand and strengthens you when you're weak. And he's the ultimate promise. God's goodness will have the final word. One day he will return, wipe away every tear and restore everything sin has broken. Until then, we can trust he is faithful, he is near, and he is good. It goes on, the text goes on and says, his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. This part reminds us that God's promises aren't temporary. His love doesn't expire. His faithfulness doesn't run out. And this should fill us with hope, even in uncertain times. In Revelation 21 verse 4 
we're given a glimpse of the ultimate fulfillment of God's faithfulness, a day when he will wipe away. Have you ever paid attention? Every tear. Every tear. And there will be no more. Did you get that? No more. No more death. And you know, when God says no more, it means no more. When we say no more, we still want a little bit more. No more death, sorrow, or pain. Now, have you ever asked this question? I'm just going to try to see if I can teach a little bit here. Because I had to ask this question. Have you ever asked the question, what's the difference between thanksgiving and praise? Have you ever asked that question? What's the difference? What's the difference between thanksgiving and praise? I don't know if we can get that chart on the screen. Avery, see if you can get that chart up. Blue background, white. See if they can see it for me. I tried to put a little chart together for you so you can see the difference. We're going to see if it comes up. I see it, I see it on my screen, but I don't see it on their screen. I don't know if it's going online. I don't, it won't work on these. Oh, man, y'all missing a good one. I will tell you, if you look back, I got it all right there. Man, it's just looking good for you. But I'm going to go ahead and explain it to you anyhow. All right. So what's the difference? Stay with me so you don't have the visual. Thanksgiving is a response to God's actions. It's a what? Response to what? God's action. Y'all stay with me. Thanksgiving is expression of gratitude for what God has done. Are y'all there with me? So Thanksgiving centers on God's blessings, provisions, and specific acts of kindness. Are y'all there with me? So Thanksgiving centers on God's blessings of what he's done for us. It's about recognizing and appreciating God's goodness in our lives. So a, a biblical example, Psalm 102, David says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Highlighting the act of recalling and being thankful for God's deeds. When Jesus healed the ten lepers, only one returned to give thanks, Luke 17, 15 through 17, exemplifying thanksgiving for a specific act of healing. Are y'all there with me? So saying thank you, Lord, for providing for me, protecting me, or healing me for what he's done. Are you with me? So it's related to a specific act, sharing testimony of God's goodness. Now, Thanksgiving is personal and specific, often tied to a particular blessing or answered prayer. What God has done for us, the particular act. Are y'all there with me? Uh, praise is a response to God's character. Thanksgiving for what he's done for you. Praise is a response to God's character. So praise is an expression of adoration for who God is. Praise centers on God's attributes, character, and majesty. Independent of what he has done for us personally. Are y'all there with me? It acknowledges his greatness, holiness, sovereignty, and unchanging nature. That's why David says his love endures forever. It says God is good. That's who he is. Are y'all following me, my brothers and sisters? So, so, so Psalm 150 is a pure call to praise. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. The psalmist praises God not only for his works, but also for his greatness and worthiness of worship. In Revelation 4 verse 8, the heavenly beings declare, you better start practicing now, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Praising God for his holiness and eternal nature. So, in practice, when we say, Lord, you are holy, loving, merciful, and worthy of all praise, that's acknowledging for who he is. Ah. So, 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 praise is often universal and transcendent, focusing on God's eternal qualities rather than his specific acts. Are y'all there with my brothers and sisters? So, so, so what happens? Mm -hmm. 
Thanksgiving leads to praise. When we thank God for his blessings, we naturally shift to praising him for his character behind those blessings. Y'all not getting it. You're not getting it. You're not getting it, man. You're not getting it. Let me break it down because you've been in the club. Let's break it down at Adventist. Friday night. In the club, acting. But now you're older and you reflect back on that. And you begin to think, man, I could have been shot, killed, murdered, drunk myself to a stupor, got connected with the wrong person. But you look back and you say, thank you, God, for sparing my life. But you also think, God, you are gracious and kind. Are y'all following me on this one? It's because of his graciousness and kindness he performs an act on your behalf. So you see, thanksgiving leads to praise, my brothers and sisters, when you think about not having the money, and yet he pours a blessing in your pocket, that cash app drop, that Zelle drop, or something hits the mail, and you weren't expecting, you say, God, thank you for your provisions of these funds. You are a true provider, God. Thank you for who you are. When you've been honest with yourself and no one else is around and you begin to think about your heart and what you think about sometimes. Especially if the angel just can put your thoughts on Facebook just for half a day and let the world see. But because God is kind and gracious he doesn't expose us for who we really are are y'all there with my brothers and sisters is he worthy of praise yes he is we serve a good God don't let the world steal that and say that he's a tyrant they lying he's a gracious God he's a kind God he's a merciful God because he's willing to forgive us no matter what we've done what we've said where we've gone he is still available because the Bible says he is good Oh, praise transcends circumstances. While thanksgiving is often tied to what God has done, praise can often can happen when even when we don't see immediate blessings because it focuses on God's eternal worth. Some of us are maintaining our sanity today. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you most of us are maintaining our sanity today. Only by the goodness of God because we know who he is. Are y'all there with me? Because when you've been laid off and got a pink slip and you don't know where the next income is going to come, you can start thinking how in the world I'm going to make it. I can't do it. I don't know what's going to happen. You start stressing out and worrying. But you remember all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and called according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches by Christ Jesus. Are y'all there with my brothers and sisters? Because you know the character of God. He won't fail you. He won't disappoint you. Because you have confidence in God's character, most of us are maintaining our sanity. Because if God is not on our side... Where will we be? And this is the goodness of God. Even when we did not acknowledge him, even when we ignored him, his mercy was still extended to us. We serve a good and gracious God. You thank God some of y'all are thanking God that he didn't come back while you were drunk. He didn't come back. When someone stayed over that shouldn't have stayed over. He didn't come back when you cursing that person out. And you know, matter of fact, it's not even about him coming back. Thank God you didn't drop dead. We serve a merciful and kind God. He's faithful to us. He's not a tyrant. He's a loving God. And he pursues us in love. 
Ah, my brothers and sisters, thanksgiving and praise are essential elements of worship, complementing each other to create a complete expression of devotion to God. Ah, let's talk about how gratitude uh, impacts us, and we're going to go home. Is that all right? Y'all been kind to us today. Gratitude isn't just a spiritual discipline. It's a force that changes everything. Let me share three ways gratitude transforms us. Number one, gratitude changes our perspective. Life has a way of overwhelming, uh, overwhel overwhelming us. Do I have a witness? The enemy wants us to focus on what's wrong, what's lacking, what's broken. But gratitude shifts our perspective. It reminds us of what's right and helps us us to see through God's eyes. First Thessalonians 5 verse 18 says, give thanks in all circumstances for this is the God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Notice Paul doesn't say give thanks for all circumstances. He says give thanks in all circumstances. Gratitude isn't about pretending everything is perfect. It's about trusting that God is still working even when things are messy. It allows us to step back and see the bigger picture. As a matter of fact, when we do that, it's a health benefit to it as well. Studies show that gratitude reduces symptoms of depression and anxiety. It lowers stress and even rewires our brain for peace and joy. Gratitude changes how we see the world and how you see yourself in it. Gratitude strengthens our faith. Every time we thank God, we're reminding ourselves of his past faithfulness. And, re and every reminder strengthens our faith for the future. John Hope Franklin, a renowned African-American Harvard-educated historian, recounted his family's experience during the Great Depression. His father, Buck Franklin, was a prominent black lawyer in Tulsa, Oklahoma, serving a predominantly black clientele. When the depression struck, many of his clients could no longer afford legal services, leading to a significant loss of income for the Franklin family. They eventually lost their home, a traumatic event that left a lasting impression on young John. Despite these challenges, the Franklin family remained steadfast in their faith and commitment to uh, education. John's mother instilled in him the importance of gratitude and perseverance, emphasizing that their circumstances do not define their worth or potential. This foundation of gratitude and resilience propelled John Hope Franklin to become a leading scholar and an advocate for uh, civil rights. My brothers and sisters, it will strengthen your faith Gratitude will strengthen your faith. Parents, lay the foundation of gratitude in your home. Can I say that again? Families create an atmosphere in your home. Husbands, tell your wife how beautiful she, beautiful she is. Tell her how much you thank her for who she is as a person. Brilliant. Patient. Providing for you. Wives. Stroke his ego. Baby, you the best. Even when he's reached the age where the muscles have shifted from here to here. And when he takes off his shirt, you say, boy, look at you. <laughs> He'll suck it in for a little while and try to. <laughs> My point is, one of the first things I do in premarital counseling is to start with the couples. Every meeting, you gotta, I want to hear you tell her and you tell him something you appreciate about each other because oftentimes in our homes I cannot remember the statistics right away but it was it was off I think it was um, Nancy Van Pelt it was either her or Kay Kuz that said about 60 to 80 percent of communication in our homes are negative 
So tell our children, create an atmosphere of affirmation and encouragement. Uh, can y'all get a, that picture? Will you able to get that picture up for me? That's it. You, you got, see if you get on the other screen for me. Is it going to come out? I don't know if it's going to come out. Is it, can y'all see a plate up there? You don't see it? It's not coming up yet? There we go. You see this plate right here? I was going to bring it in. It's called You Are Special Today. My wife, I'm going to give her props. I was going to bring the actual plate, but I'm glad I didn't because when I was telling what I was going to do on the way to church, <laughs> you know, it's funny. You can't bring dishes out the house, man. You know, she's... But this plate right here, my, my, my wife is committed to creating an atmosphere in the home of affirmation. So this plate she purchased before we even had children. And every day, somebody in our family, that plate was at their seat at the table. So each girl, there's a family of a family of six. Each girl had a day where they had that plate. You are special. And then the parents had a day. And on the seventh day, the Sabbath, who had the plate? Jesus. This is from before they came out. I'm talking about creating an atmosphere. And I'm not talking from theory. I'm talking about from practice. And I applaud her for, this, for, for doing this. So this was your plate for the day. You're special. And then at evening devotion or morning devotion, Brother Davis, who had the plate was that day. It was their day at devotion, family devotion, where everyone in the house had to compliment that person for who they are. So every day, somebody was getting at least five compliments of affirmation of who they are as a person. Imagine you starting that at a very young age and as the years go by. Just affirming. Why is that important? Let's be honest. School is rough, isn't it? And you know how we are. I was going to say you know how kids are, but y'all know how we are. We were rough in school, weren't we? Y'all know, y'all tell the truth. Tell the truth. Y'all know if somebody's shoes were out of place, hair was out of place, clothes were out of place, y'all tell the truth. You know that brother, if he shopped at certain stores, you were hard. And sometimes kids are hard. Sometimes even, sometimes just the socialization, it might, even be, it might even be their fashion, who they are. But sometimes people just have beefs against you. And you're on guard all day. They shouldn't have to be on guard all day at school and come home and be on guard at home. Sometimes you got to build that up and pour into them. Are y'all there with me, my brothers and sisters? So I challenge. It's on Amazon. What was it, $36? $36 at Amazon. So when I come to your house, you don't have to give me the plate. <laughs> I just need to see the plate. Is that all right? But what my whole, what my whole point is, the people you love the most oftentimes we take for granted. When the last time you sent your mother a uh, mother's appreciation outside of May? The last time you told them how much you appreciate When was the last time you sent your dad something outside of June? Just tell them how much you appreciate Not a birthday, not an anniversary, just a note of thanks. Out the blue, random. We need to create this in our home so it can go to the next generation. All right? So that's the plate. That's it. And my last thing, last thing, gratitude witnesses to others, my brothers. I'm bringing this home. In a world filled with negativity and great, a grateful heart is a light in the darkness. When we live with gratitude, people notice. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 16, your light, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify God. My brothers and sisters, there are health benefits to being grateful. It improves our relationships. It improves our immune systems. It allows us to recover better from sickness, but also living with gratitude. Living with gratitude, we need this in the last days. 
If we are people of Seventh-day Adventists that proclaim an end-time message and we read the book of Revelation, we know it's going to get worse before it gets better in terms of the circumstances in which we live in, but not the hope that we have. So I want to encourage you in these last days, let's live with gratitude. Remember, gratitude isn't just a, for the good times. It's what we carry with us to the end. Revelation 14, 12 says, here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. This verse is often used to describe the endurance and faithfulness of God's people during the final crisis. But how does gratitude fit into this picture? Let me walk you through it just for a second. Listen, gratitude anchors the faith of God's people. In the last days, the saints will face unprecedented challenges, persecution, economic hardship, and the pressures to compromise their faith. Revelation 13 describes a time when no one can buy or sell unless they have the mark of the beast. These circumstances, circumstances will test the faith of God's people. Gratitude serves as an anchor doing such, such trials. Why? Because gratitude is rooted in remembering. When we thank God, we recall his past blessings or faithfulness, which strengthens our confidence in his promise for the future. It's not coincidence that throughout the Bible, God instructs his people to remember what he has done. In Deuteronomy 8, verse 2, Moses reminds Israel, and you shall remember the Lord your God. You shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness. So we must remember his provisions in times of need, his protection in moments of danger, his presence in seasons of trial. When fear and uncertainty rise, gratitude will redirect our focus from the chaos around us to the faithfulness of the one who holds the future. And finally, gratitude is not a tool for survival. Y'all stay with me on this one. Y'all see it on the screen? I don't know if it's on the screen, but gratitude is not just a tool for survival. It's a rehearsal for eternity. Amen. Revelation 7, 9, and 10 describes a great multitude standing before the throne of God crying, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. This scene, this is a scene of eternal gratitude. The saints' thankfulness in the last days is a precursor to the songs of praise they will sing in heaven. Gratitude now is like turning or tuning our instruments for the heavenly symphony. Every time we thank God, we join the chorus of those who declare his goodness both now and forever. Remember, my brothers and sisters, I don't know about you, but something I've learned, because remember, gratitude is not just for two for survival, it's a rehearsal for eternity. I'm going to go ahead and pull this down. I played ball, I played baseball and football at a park not too far from here, Kaya Heights. It's about 15 minutes away from here. And we used to go, and through the week, we had practice. And some days of the week we played, and on the weekends we played games, football. And when we show up for practice, you can play. But if you don't show up for practice, you what? You don't play. If they don't show up for rehearsal, do they play the next day? Depends on your talent, huh? If you don't show up for rehearsal, you don't play or perform. Are y'all there with me? So my coaches always say, now we're talking 9, 10, 11, 12-year-olds. Your talent isn't that great. They just need bodies then. But he always said, you don't show up for practice, you don't play. Gratitude is our rehearsal here on earth to join the choir in heaven. 
And if you can't practice gratitude here, you can't play up in heaven. Because if you disregarded all his blessings and didn't appreciate, because if, if you're not appreciating, obviously you're not acknowledging. I signed up for the team and I've been practicing. I know I'm not the only one in here. I want to encourage you to keep practicing and watch the power of gratitude transform your life Jesus Christ modeled before us what it means to walk on this earth and to stay focused on his father and to acknowledge and to praise his father despite the circumstances around him he was bent on I'm going to the cross because I love you. And my father has destined me to go to the cross to pay the penalty for all of our sins. He went to the cross and he fulfilled the commitment and he said, the father is glorified. My brothers and sisters, Christ has modeled what it takes to survive on this earth so that you can be ready for heaven. Don't allow your circumstances to stop your praise. Don't allow people to stop your praise. Don't allow what's going on in the world to stop your praise. And the greatest praise you can give to God is to surrender and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior.